Hey everybody, what's going on? Your host, Lovely Cheese Pizza here. Welcome back to Let's Play some more Gran Turismo 3, the ultimate driving simulator, where last time we finally were able to dispatch the living embodiment of evil that is known as the last two parts <laughs> of the super license exams. It was bad. <laughs> it was it was not pretty. But we did manage to get it done, so that is finally out of our lives forever. We never have to see its ugly mug ever again. And so now, now that that's all taken care of, we can move on to the next challenge. Of which, I've, I've gotten some cool recommendations of what cars to use on different, uh, different challenges. I heard, um, I think it was in the same comment actually, uh, for a few of these. There was uh, using the Razo Silvia fully decked out in the All Japan Championship, I think it was. I also got a recommendation to use the absolutely gorgeous, uh, wherever it is, CLK Touring Car in the uh, GT All-Stars Championship, which I'm feeling pretty good about that. The only thing that worries me about this car, though, is that we used the Vertigo in that last championship. That thing had about, what was it, about 490-something horsepower? 440, oh. So it's pretty much the same. Okay, that's interesting. So 443, this actually has slightly more. The only thing I worry about with this car in this particular scenario is like those last three races. Because we saw what happened when I was using the Vertigo. Those last three races were a real slog, man. And it was... <laughs> oh, it was very stressful. We lost a good deal of power out of that. Just from the natural decline of things. And so it, they became... While amazingly enter entertaining, they were so stressful. And so this is what I'm thinking. This is what I'm thinking. I want to see if there's anything I can do to this car to maybe improve it a little bit. If there's like any upgrades to be made, I'm going to make them because I want to give, I don't want to like go crazy, but I want to give myself at least some kind of boost. Oh, 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 <laughs> 548. Oh, damn, I'll totally take that. Is there more? There's more? <laughs> oh, oh my god, 670? <laughs> Please tell me, come on. Ah, oh no. 793? Oh no. Oh, dude, this thing would be an absolute death bringer with that. Like, that wouldn't even be fair. That wouldn't even be fair. I'm definitely gonna buy this upgrade later. Um, I think just to keep it, to keep it, you know, to keep it interesting, I'm gonna just buy the stage one. I, I don't want to just totally obliterate everybody because I do like having a bit of a challenge but going into you know the into the expert area uh, afterwards I will definitely buy that so that is good to know is there anything else that would be worth my time to buy holy shit dude I did not know that you could deck this touring car out like this <laughs> I thought it was just gonna be kind of like a uh, Dyson Sylvia of, of cars if you will in the way that it's just you know, got that kind of mid-level horsepower that still is just amazingly versatile. I did not know that you could just turn this thing into an absolute chainsaw, if you will. Good God. Okay, well, now that we've got that all figured out, let's go jump into the Gran Turismo All-Stars. I don't know what I was trying to say, but it kind of came out all muddled and weird. So, here we go. Let's actually, let's see what races we have. We get to start with Laguna Seca. Oh, good. Follow it up with Backwards Deep Forest. Oh boy, this is shaping up to be nice. Midfield's okay. Test course could be interesting. I guess it really depends on what our top end speed looks like at the end of this. Um, Apricot Hill's fine. Rome Circuit's fine. Seattle, god damn you. Uh, special, special Stage 11 will be certainly interesting. These two will be one hell of a deal. Along with that being the way to round it out might be, might be something. So, let's do it. I apologize, by the way, for this taking such a long time to get going. <laughs> I just, uh, eh, what do you do? So, now that I've got you here, I gotta tell you guys about a dream that I had. It was like a week ago. I just found the note, the note that I had written down. Okay, so what do we have? Oh, God, he's back. 
the 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 GTSR Viper is back. Oh, that makes me happy. Uh, also, the Super Auto backs Mr. S is back. Ooh boy. But what I am bummed out about is that the uh, the Corvette's not here. He was my other he was my other dog. Oh well, that's okay. That's okay. We'll move on with it. But so I had this weird as hell dream last week, and I like generally. When, when crazy dreams happen, I, I can usually, you know, remember them well enough and I don't really have to worry about it. But for this one, it was so strangely bizarre that I, I really felt like in order to, in order to really get the most out of this, I had to write it down. Otherwise, I knew I was going to forget it. So I took the liberty of, of you know, of uh, inscribing this on a sticky note when I had the chance and I've got it sitting right here and I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you about it. While we're uh, seeing exactly what this this new iteration of our touring car is made of, because if we can if we can put these dudes in a shallow grave for a little while, I'm gonna be nice and happy with that. And we'll kind of also you know get a good idea of you know what the what the re you know the pit situation is gonna be like for the other cars that we're going up against. We're gonna we're gonna see if the Viper is gonna is gonna, you know, follow suit and do what he's been doing this whole time. I have no idea how I made it through that <laughs> without without flipping the bird, if you will. So, in this dream, I, I'm still kind of, you know, I've written part of it down, but even some of the details on it are, are still kind of fuzzy in my mind, but in this dream, I apparently was at the, uh, the Full Tilt Arcade, which I don't know, I don't know if that was like, you know, I don't know if there were multiple locations of that or not. Full Tilt was it was a name of an arcade that I went to a lot when I was when I was a little kid because um, the health food store when it was in the Salem Center Mall, um, just like two doors down was was the uh, Full Tilt Arcade, and uh, they had all sorts of cool shit in there. I've actually told you guys multiple stories about you know games that I had played in there over time, and oh boy, and oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, and so in this dream I was there. But it, I wasn't really there. Like, I, in my mind I was there, but it was this totally different building. And it was like this multi-floor, like, crazy huge arcade with, like, all the jams. And they, they had, like, alcohol and beer and food on tap, which, you know, they, the original arcade had none of that shit. Um, and, uh, and it was just like, it was, it was so, it was such a weird thing. And I was there with, uh, with... A whole bunch of friends of mine, and, and we were all just like hanging out and doing whatever. And in the like, kind of on the side of the room, like really close to our table, there was this there was this ladder that was up against the wall, and it was just huge. I'm, this ladder like it went it went up and it went like out of my field of view. Like that's how high up it went. That also was was how high up this you know building was, and. For me, I have crippling acrophobia. Like I have such a, I have such a bad fear of heights that, you know, I would in in the real world there would be no way you could get me to go up that high of a, of a ladder. No fucking way. But in this dream, I decided, you know what? I want to see what's up there. And so, and so I go up there. And as I start climbing up this ladder, I can I can hear I can hear the faint sound of music. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. And then. For, and then for a moment it sounded really familiar. And I was like, huh. This music actually sounds really nice. I wonder what the hell it could be. So I keep going further up, and it gets clearer and clearer, and I get up to where the end of this ladder is, and I still can't see anything, but I can hear the music clear as day, and it's Mariah Carey, which, hey, that's awesome. <laughs> Mariah Carey, you know, at least, well, non, you know, non-intoxicated Mariah Carey music is great. Fully intoxicated you know, full, full dumbass Mariah Carey, eh, maybe not so much, but still better than just about anything that you hear on any commercial anymore, because that shit's not even singing, it's just, like, really quiet, you know, speaking that sounds like they're trying to sing, but it sucks, that's basically what we're, what we're getting these days. Uh, anywho, so I can hear the music, but I can't see anything, and so I kind of, like, shimmy my way around and turn around while I'm still standing on the top of this ladder up against the wall. And I look out, and I can see, like, in the distance, there's, like, this weird stage out there, and I can see Mariah Carey performing 
and there's like this weird ass like fashion show going on and like Beyonce is walking around and there's like a whole bunch of people that are like adorning all these crazy ass costumes while Mariah Carey is just belting out this music and I'm just sitting up here like dude this is tight <laughs> this is like, a, like I got like a free concert and a free show going on here but then it started getting weird and this is this is where the dream got really strange really really fast all of a sudden um, all of a sudden the music starts to distort a little bit like all like her voice started getting like really really distorted and dark and like I don't even know how to really I don't even really know how to really oh no 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 not 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 there that is not the time to start spinning out um, I don't really know how to describe it you know accurately but it just it like the voices were all warping like it sounds like something that you would have heard out of like a demonic like a demonic uh, you know like a jack-in-the-box or something where it's just I don't know <laughs> I, you, I, you, I'm sure you guys understand what I'm trying to say like the voice just sounded like it was being twisted around and and it like the pitch went way way down like a good six octaves or so and it just it sounded like something that would be playing throughout the speaker system of hell that's basically what I'm trying to get at and like all of a sudden like all the colors of everything were warping like all the people were starting to walk weird and their bodies were changing shape and their their outfits were like starting to tear and you know get really frayed and and you know crazy looking and there was like this crazy you know, like neon fog that was coming up from the floor where I was at earlier and and, it, and so I, and then I looked down and that's when my acrophobia went insane as I looked down and I couldn't see I couldn't see anything down there I couldn't see you know any anybody any people down on the bottom floor it was just this weird colored fog that was like rising and getting closer and closer to me with the passing seconds and the music was getting creepier and creepier from like a demonic carnival and uh and then all of a sudden she started, she like looked me dead in the face and her hair was like over her eyes and and she just started belting out this really, like really deep, like guttural voice that's just, you know, I don't even know, I don't even know, I don't remember what song it was, but it was just like this really deep, just <laughs> type of thing. And I was just like, whoa, <laughs> I was like, I need to get the hell out of here right away. This is not cool. And so... I started, I started trying to like turn my body around so that I could start going down this ladder, and as I'm, as I'm, you know, get, you know, making my way down there, you know, the voices are starting to fade away a little bit, but then, and you know, I can't see the demonic carnival barker people, <laughs> and you know, the people with their frayed ass outfits and all that. And all of a sudden, all that's starting to die down a little bit, and I can feel my heart rate going, you know, normalizing a little bit as I'm crawling down off this thing, and I can feel my fear of heights starting to go away as I'm going through this crazy, you know, colored miasma that's starting to surround me. And as I'm getting down through it, as I'm just about to, like, pierce through the cloud of, of fog, um, like, a bunch of the rungs of the ladder break, you know, and I start like falling through it but I'm like you know holding the the sides of the ladder as I'm sliding down it just burning and splintering the living hell out of my hands and eventually it just breaks through and I, I now I'm just in a free fall and I'm just like yelling as I'm going straight down towards the floor but I'm still going through this colored you know fog miasma or whatever and I finally catch you know visual of the floor and I hit the floor so hard that I break through it and I'm, uh, and I'm like, you know, I'm like falling through the floor into like this weird chasm of nothingness. And as I'm falling and I'm like, you know, coming to terms with, you know, kind of what's taking place at the moment, I, I look back up and all of the freaking crazed beings that were up at that weird demon fashion show or whatever are all falling down this pit, like pursuing me. And I'm just like, what the hell? <laughs> And I eventually, I, that's that's where, you know, I kind of came back online and woke up, but my god, it was so weird. I, I woke up, I wasn't in like a cold sweat or anything, but I woke up and I was like, dude, you've got some mental issues, and you need to write this thing down right away, because people need to hear, <laughs> people need to hear the greatness of whatever the hell was going on in your brain 
when that thing came out, because I don't know, like, what I would have eaten or what I would have been watching that would have possibly, you know, fabricated this sort of, you know, thing in my head. Definitely one of the stranger dreams I've had in recent memory, outside of the, the one that I told you guys about a couple weeks ago where I was confronting all of my old, you know, all of my old bullies from my, from my childhood. That one was also, you know, highly uncomfortable, but this one was, was really weird and unsettling in a, in a, you know, in a more unrealistic kind of way. But, uh, yeah, kind of makes me want to stay away from, from, uh, arcades for a little while, which is a horrible thing to ever have to say. Seriously, because <laughs> if I ever if I ever go into an arcade and see a uh, a ladder up against a wall, you better believe that I ain't going. I'm not going within arm's reach of that thing for God knows how long. God, I don't like this level. I hate it. I hate the deep forest because I hate how much weaving you have to do like this. And I mean, weaving weaving is okay if if it's Hugo weaving because Hugo weaving is fucking awesome because. He's Agent Smith, and he's also, you know, one of the, uh, one of the, one of the, you know, high elves or whatever in, uh, in Lord of the Rings. And he's also, I think he played, uh, didn't he play Red Skull? I think he played Red Skull in, uh, what was that one, Captain America movie? I forget. Oh, God. Okay. We're good. We've restored order a little bit here. We're at least now in a place where we can start building a lead and at least not, you know, not having to play catch-up so much here. Yeah, his top end speed is definitely a little higher than mine. That is why I worry. That is why I definitely worry about the test course. That, like, that's a race that, depending on on how you know the pit stop situation takes place, which I don't recall any cars going in there um, from last race. Maybe because it's a shorter race, I don't know. But the test course, it's not a very long race. Like that is a race that I could very, very realistically see myself getting, like you know, potentially last place in. Because we do we do have some serious power, but when it comes, you know, in sustaining a really long straightaway like that, that's where that's where my fear lies. Because if nobody's gonna hit the pits, there's not gonna be anything that's going to, you know, allow us to regain any sort of, you know, any sort of real estate on them at all. That's where that's where I worry. I also worry about this race a little bit because I can't seem to shake him at all. I can definitely regain stuff on him here, but I can't seem to shake him. We're going to be going at it for a couple of minutes, ladies and gentlemen. Because I don't think anybody's going to be taking a hard right turn up here to go get their tires changed by the invisible beings that, that exist over there. Okay. One of these days, I'm gonna have to figure out how to navigate that weird serpentine area uh, in the in the middle to end of this of this race. Cause up to this point, still haven't really gotten a grasp on that yet. It's still kind of really got a, like a chokehold on on my life as far as trying to figure out a, a way to effectively deal with it. And I know part of it is because I I'm taking the inside track of that like way too much, and so it's it's obstructing my view. And I should probably try to do something about that over these next couple of laps. Seeing maybe that might help out a little bit in terms of my ability to maybe be able to freaking see just a, a smidgen. Okay, here we go. Nope, nope, nope. Ah! Yeah, these, these corners are getting a little rough. I can definitely see where the last, like, the last lap or two of, of Special Stage Route 11 might be an absolute you know, mud-treading nightmare in terms of trying to get around some of those really, really hard corners. Especially if it's a thing where, you know, the Viper goes out and does what he did last time where he takes a monster lead and then I have to try to, you know, build up a, enough of a lead to hold him off at the end. Like, if I'm having hard times with corners like this, it could be... Uh, that could be one that we really, really are begging for a redo on. We will see, though. We will see. Hanging in there for now. Come on, tires! Don't fail me now. I I need this. We really gotta have a strong showing early on. I mean, not like I'm seriously worried about losing the overall score here. I, I think that's gonna be pretty well in hand. But I just uh, you know I'm really trying to get that overall win percentage as high up as possible. If we could get another another ten consecutive wins, that would be amazing. 
We could maybe bump that thing up to 88% if we're if we're lucky. Oh baby, look at that. That was a good that was a good sequence. That's what I like to see. That's what I like to see. Well done. Okay. All we gotta do is just get through this one last portion here without losing ourselves. Look at that! That was our that was easily our best lap that we've had. I think uh well, maybe not, maybe not in, well, actually it was, in terms of time, it was also our best lap. So, hey, look at that. Look at that. And the Viper GTS is going to come almost in dead last. You would, I would imagine, personally, the, the Impreza rally car should probably finish in last in just about every one of these. I mean, I think in terms of horsepower, he only has, what, maybe like 300 and something at best? I don't know. Hard to say. Hard to say, but Team Castro, man, they're they're definitely they're kind of ruling ruling the roost outside of myself, of course. All right, not to mention we're gonna make a just a shitload of money. <laughs> we're really gonna be making that bankroll uh, pretty tight, pretty tight fit. So, my friends, we're gonna stop right here after a couple of races with our our newly powered up CLK touring car. I think we're at a good place that we can stop because the next race, if I'm not mistaken, I think is midfield. Uh, midfield and then the test course. So we'll see. I, I'm feeling okay about midfield. That one shouldn't be a huge problem, but the test course is really the one that I'm probably most intrigued about in the entire scope of, of this championship thing. So we will see what happens. This has been your host, Lovely Cheese Pizza, saying thank you guys for watching and enduring another one of my weird nightmare dream scapes that I like to paint in the old noggin there. And I will see you guys next time. So take care, everybody. I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.